One, two. Hello. This is John Shuttleworth speaking from a distance of about two inches. A bit too close, actually. Move back a bit. That's better. From about eight inches from the mic on a warm, sunny afternoon. Sunday. Just mowing the lawn. It's a little bit wet, actually. So I might do it again later. Hello. One, two. Present the Shuttleworths. Episode 1 Cotton Buddies. Peacefully in her sleep. No. Though she's just a distant memory, occasional tears I weep. Oh, it's awful. Sounds really muffled, doesn't it? See, I think the tape heads need cleaning, but uh, I haven't got any cotton buds. This is my problem. I've looked everywhere. I can't send this to Paul Young. I know it's only a demo, but. What are you oh. doing? Hello, love. Yeah, I'm just doing a bit of recording. Oh. Right, well, I'm off out. Are you? Yes. Right. Yep, Mary's off to see a friend mm. who lives on the other side of the estate. That's right. She's called Joan Chitty, mm. isn't she? And she's just qualified as a physio. Yeah, she has. Which, uh, obviously, she's very pleased about. And, mm. and you are as well, Mary, oh, are I'm delighted, she's yes. She's a good friend of yours. Mm. Yeah. Isn't she? Well, she's, she's a colleague, you know. Right. I work with her. Yes, so. that's right, because, of course, Mary is a dinner lady. At uh, a local school, mm. at the, the primary school. Um, Are you want to heat up that macaroni cheese for your dinner? I will. Yes, oh, right. thank you, love. There's a web lettuce as well. Right. Okay. Lovely. Uh, oh, Mary, have we any cotton buds? I don't know. Have you looked in the bathroom cabinets? Yes, there, there aren't any. Well, we haven't got any then. Right. Where's Karen? I believe she's at a friend Maxine. Is she? Mm. Ah. Yeah. That's a shame because I could have borrowed a karaoke machine. But she'll have taken it with her. And my son Darren, he's got a lovely system, but uh, he won't let me borrow it. I know he won't. Oh, there goes Mary. Bye, love. Oh, just ignore me completely. Oh, I think I'll go and have my lunch, actually. Because I'm a little bit peckish. And then I'll go next door and uh, see my next door neighbour, obviously. Uh, and Soul Agent, Ken Worthington. Oh, in fact, he's, oh, he's just walking past our house. <coughs> he's got a little carrier bag in his hand, which I suspect contains a curry. It'll take out. He does this sometimes. Sometimes he sits in and has a curry on his own. But uh, there were probably too many families in there today, and he felt a little bit self-conscious. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll join you in a little while, ladies and gentlemen, at Cannes. Bye for now. No, it's to play Alan and Dale. Yes. Tessa Sanderson's playing Robin Hood. I think they got Suzanne Dando for Little John. Yeah. But it's not all um, sporting types. Is it? That last from the Crankies. I think she's playing Friar Tuck. Mm. Mm. <coughs> so bring your, your guitar, Janet. Perhaps wear a nice green bikini or something. Lincoln Green. Have you got one? Mm. Lovely. All right, Janet, I better go because I've got another client with me. <clears throat> all right, love. Good luck, anyway. It's all right. Oh. Still all happening for uh, John and Laro, I see. Mm, it is, yes. yes it's, mm. it's an all-female production of uh, Robin Hood. They're doing it at Keithley. Oh. Which I think she'll be just right for um, Alan and Dale. Yeah. You know. Mm. Anyway, John, what can <laughs> I do for you? Do you want some stuff, Nan? Oh, no. Just can't manage it. No, all. thanks, can I just said um, mm. macaroni cheese. Oh, all right. I'm quite full. No, I, uh, have you got any uh, cotton buds? Because I need to uh, clean my tatty pads. Oh, you don't need them. What do you mean? Well, no, you just... Well, hey? you just get, um, you just get um, a cotton rag yeah. and douse it in soapy water. <sighs> and then you... Um, oh, it on, no. The no, I can't, I can't. I'm going to stop you there because mm. the, <laughs> you mm. don't do that. No. That's not. That's what you don't do. Oh. You don't do that to your tatty pads, do you? Yes. Can't yes, believe I do. it. I do, John. No, I, no, you know, you damage the equipment if you mm. do that. 
If I'd known you were going to say that, I wouldn't, you know, to ask your opinion. No. He'd use well. um, I- isopropyl alcohol and cotton bulbs. Oh, nobody That's t- very wrong. Nobody told me that, John. Well. Nobody told me. I left Cairns and returned home in time to catch the tail end of the omnibus edition of EastEnders. After a cup of tea and a few chocolate biscuits, I decided to abandon all thoughts of recording work and concentrate instead on DIY. Now, for a long time, I've been meaning to relocate a smoke alarm that uh, we've got fixed above the kitchen door, because it keeps going off, you see, every time I've uh, mixed grill. The new site was to be above the front door, and I just drilled the holes for the... Um, um, the raw plugs. That's right, Cam. Mm. Yeah. You've well, just come round, haven't you? I have, yes. Yeah, I was just going to say, mm. um, when I should come round, but Cam Worthington. No. But you're beating me to it. I have, yes. What can I do for you? Well, I brought you some cotton buds, John. Oh. I found them under the sink. Yeah. Well, you're too late, Ken. You're too late, because I'm on to DIY now. Oh. Mm. Oh, dear. But while you're here, mm. perhaps you'll be good enough to remain at the foot of the stepladders oh. and keep them steady for me. Yes. All right. That's then. it. Just yes. keep a nice tight grip. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Much appreciated. Yes, yeah, all right. It's a pleasure. Good. The two men worked on in silence. Ken holding the ladder and me fixing the smoke alarm. Mm. However, after a while, I sensed a series of vibrations through the metal framework and I looked down and I was shocked to see Ken was actually sat on one of the rungs of the ladder with his legs poked through and he was swinging them quite violently, rather like a child, you know, and chuckling to himself. I said, what do you think you're doing, Ken? Oh, I'm just having a little rest, John. Well, don't, because, look, I'm hey. careering all over the place. No, man. you're not. Just keep it's stationary. Steady's around. No. It is. What are you doing? Ken! Oh, oh Ken. Ken. Ken had slipped right off the rung, and his body had fallen through. Ken. You know, and his head had become caught between two rungs. And uh, the weight of his body... Uh, made it very difficult to, to you know, free him. And he'd gone uh, bright red, you know, which reminded me, actually, of the time he was on New Faces in 73. I don't know if you saw him. He was known as TV's clarinet man then, of course. But uh, he came last on the show, and Tony Hatch gave him a real dressing down. And I think that embarrassed him, and he was going, you know, really red. I mean, I only had a black and white telly, but uh, I could see you know, I was going crimson. And he'd gone that way now, you know. But uh, there was no time for reflection, obviously. Just yanked him out, um, led him into the lounge, and lay him on the sofa. I went to fetch him a glass of water. Here you are, Ken. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Is that better? Mm. Oh. Thank are you going you. to uh, sit up or are you going to lie down? I sit up, please, John. Right. Just pump the pillows. Oh. Uh, obviously, I'm terribly sorry about what happened, Ken. But you must realise that it you know, was your own fault. Mm. Mm. Maybe so. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Oh, that tree looks nice, doesn't it? It does, Thanks. yes. Mm. Yes, Ken's looking um, through the bay window at a copper beach that's uh, swaying in the breeze. Mm. It's lit up by the evening sun, isn't it, Ken? Yes. It is, yeah. yes. Oh, it's a bit frustrating, isn't it? Because, I mean, mm. ordinarily, we'd go out for a couple of lagers now, wouldn't we? Mm. To Baslo, someone like that. Mm. Well, why don't but we now? No, no, I don't think we should, no. Ken. Oh. No. You no. lie back now. Yes. Get some rest. Not well. Got a party neck. Of course, a few years ago, ladies and gentlemen, you wouldn't have been able to see anything through my bay window because there was a caravan um, parked hard up against it. No, it, it actually made inside here rather like a tomb, you know, a bit depressing. It all came to a head one day when my son Darren was lying on the sofa, rather like you are now, Ken. He had tonsillitis. But um, I was feeling quite gloomy because I'd just come back from attending the funeral of an ex-employer called Eric Blackburn. I don't think you'll know him, ladies and gentlemen, but Ken knows him, don't he? Oh, he's gone to sleep. Ah. Oh. No, but he, he was a hang glider pilot 
and uh, he crashed, basically, ladies and gentlemen. And this is near Hathersage, and he'd, he'd just come into land, and he said, uh, get the Volvo, Val. You know, those were his last words to his wife. And uh, a, a gust of wind suddenly, uh, you know, whisked him away. I think his Wellington got caught in some ferns or something, and he sort of went off at an angle, and he, he went into a rock, and died as a result of his injuries. But uh, I attended that funeral, and um, I'd just come back from it, I found Darren on the sofa with a bad fever, you know. And as I say, it was like a tomb in here, though it was a bright sunny day outside. And I suddenly became aware of the mortality of the Shuttleworth family, you know, to me. And I wrote this little song, which I'd like to play for you now, if I may. It's called From a Father to a Son. It worked well in a summer musical or something. Perhaps a Forces Review show or something. Michael Crawford could do an excellent job of it, I'm sure. As could Marty Webb. But unfortunately, it's, it's a gentleman's lyric. I want to sing it quietly, because I don't want to wake Ken. Tend you when you're very ill Plump the pillows beneath your head I'll undertake your burial Or my wife Mary will If I'm already dead Oh, don't know what's happened there I... Hush now, my oh. child, lie you very still. Oh, what's going on? Eat your tomato soup oh. and soft white bread. <laughs> yeah. Or I'll undertake your burial, oh. or my wife Mary will, <laughs> if I'm already dead. Oh, 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 oh. oh. It's right, Kate Bush, this bit's like. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. John. Oh, oh. 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 It's lovely. Yeah, it should be Barack. I've heard this one before. It should be on Barack, Ken. I've just hit reggae mm. by accident. Oh, it's a lovely beat. Yeah. Works very well. Does it? Good. Mm. It's a bit good single for Clannad. Somebody like that. Very good. Very catchy. No, no, no. If I'm already <laughs> dead. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. I suddenly oh, feel much oh. better. Good. Mm. <coughs> now listen, mm. I think it's time you did some recording. Yes, mm. yes it is. Yes. Um, where's the cotton buds that you so kindly brought me? They're here, but they've got oh. a bit squashed. <sighs> yes, they're a bit soiled, aren't mm. they? Yeah. Can't use them, can But it doesn't matter, John. What do you mean? Because you don't need them. <sighs> Ken, I'm not going to use a dirty rag. No. I've already told you how I feel about that. I know. No, I'm proposing something completely different. What? I suggest... <laughs> Mm. Go on. Take your time. I propose right. that we go into You're the right. Peak District to yeah. Matlock. Oh. Where I have a friend called Carl. Carl. He does like um uh, yeah. sells microphones and uh, he does jingles for um hospital radio. Oh yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. He's got a studio, you. an eight track studio. I see. Where we can record your song for Paul Young if you want to. So I think I think you're ready for multi track. Yes. Mm. Can. Yes. I'd love to. I'd love to, but surely uh, it'll be expensive, won't it, Ken? No, no, I think it's about eight pounds. Is it? Mm. Pound for every track? That's right. So come on, get your coat on. Pardon? If we hurry, we might just make it in time for the evening session. But, Ken, mm. it's Sunday night. I know it is. The roads have no. been nice and empty. I've got to... Uh, what? We've got to polish uh, the children's shoes for the morning. Well, they can, they can polish their own shoes for once. Mm. Well, come on, this is important. But Do you want to be a pop star or not? Yes, but Ken, we haven't no. got a flask or anything. Well, we can stop off at a carvery. What about Mary? Leave her a note. Now, come on, hurry. Oh, see you later, ladies and gentlemen. Good to record me demo. John, Paul Young. come on. What are you right, waiting for? Yes. Don't pull me sweater, Ken. Oh, anyway. I'm sorry. Damn it, a fabric. Yeah, I'm sorry, John. Just calm down. Shuttleworths was written and performed by Graham Fellows and produced by Paul Schlesinger.